Well, it can be intimidating. I've done question time and it's quite frightening. But actually, once you're in, the water's lovely. I think you can actually splash around and enjoy yourself. I think it's much more, uh, for me, that um, I want more older women. And you will say to me, well, you would say that, wouldn't you, Esther? And yes, I would, but I am very aware of the fact that older women often feel they have no valid place in today's society. They feel that even more than older men. I'm I had sure. a letter from a lady who said, um, I'm an optimist by nature and sometimes I have to be when I face another pointless day when I'm a waste of space. And I think she needs validation. So more ugly more old women, please, right. on panels. Isabel, are you asked to if be on they're panels? Good. Are you asked to be on panel as much? Well, I think that there's a time just before the party conference season, probably about two weeks before, where my inbox gets flooded by panic-stricken emails from people <laughs> saying, we'd like you to join our panel on the politics of Afghanistan or something <laughs> like that. And I have to reply saying, I'm very sorry, but I've never been there. And would you like me to recommend another woman? Because I know that that's going to be their next <laughs> reply because they know that someone's going to boycott their panel okay. because it's an all-male panel. They haven't been able to find a woman and they're looking for a woman, any woman by that point. Right. That's quite frustrating because I would offer nothing on that panel right. at all. Yeah, Zoe, I mean, come on, give us the... Give, what, what is going on here? Why don't women uh, look, get, get invited onto panels more a, when, when organisers do try, you know, to get... <laughs> Yeah, I do, not think, I do not think the problem is that organisers are really trying and women are kind of backing away. I do not think that's the you problem. You don't think that's it? No, I do not think that's it. I mean, basically, exactly as Isabel says, one woman is enough, right? So as soon as they've got their woman, then that's all the women they need. I've only ever been on a panel with two women when we're talking about child poverty. And, that's, and then we often have five women and no men, and no Did men in the audience. Brilliant question time with all women apart from David Starkey. <laughs> and they, <laughs> they gave him hell. Yeah, and well, it was yeah. one of the most entertaining question times that I've ever seen. But so to be fair, actually, having just one woman on a panel is, it, you know, it's tokenism and all of those things, but it's also kind of representative of the worlds in which right. we work mm -hmm. in. So <laughs> only 23% of political journalists are women. We've now got finally 30% of MPs are women. Yeah, I don't and think so that panels should be. I'm like not saying they should be representation, representation because it, otherwise you're just reinforcing the system you're oh, in. Oh no, right? no, of course, but it just it's a reflection of how difficult it is to find. I women mean, I think the thing is. You know, there is a lot of jeopardy for a woman going on, certainly going on TV, you know, there's a huge amount of abuse, there's a huge amount of kind of Mary Beard experience, which is really, really unpleasant. There's a kind of expectation among the kind of TV planners that, you know, a man might be a polymath, a man might be an authority, a man can be an authority on anything, and a woman can do one narrow thing. So, you know, if Ma Mary Beard isn't available, then unfortunately no woman was available. So there's a huge kind of, there's a huge amount to get past, and I wouldn't be at all surprised. Do, do you, you've dismissed the w women being bashful argument, which I've heard quite a lot, that women, let me put it this way, that TV people want a big bust up. Mm. And maybe that doesn't suit an intelligent woman in the way that it suits David Starkey. I certainly think the aggressive interviewer doesn't make it comfortable for women. I mean, I've been Paxman, I don't know whether you've been <laughs> Paxman, but he called me a clapped out television presenter when I was wow. trying to be an MP for wow. Luton <laughs> South. And you know, what I should have said is, excuse me, sir, that isn't the kind of conversation civilised mm. people have, and it doesn't bring the best out of me. But of course, he didn't want to bring the best out of me. He wanted but that's the to kind of conversation me. he has with Lots of people, but, men and women, isn't yes. it? It just may be that it affects some... I think some... we don't flourish in that. In I that. don't think this is about men and women at no, all. I no. mean, adversarialism is really boring to watch and a lot of people do back off it and a lot of intelligent people won't do it because it's not sophisticated. But that, I think, takes in men and women, yeah. right? Okay, look, one of the ideas, really, is just positive discrimination or quotas. You basically say, if you're organising a panel at a conference, you make sure you have a third women, you know, you just don't do it, whether it's IT or whatever it is. Do you believe in quotas, Isabel? <laughs> No, because you end up being invited on a panel where the, the organiser is just desperate to invite you because you're a woman, and that's an incredibly depressing experience. Esther? I never thought I'd say this, but I do believe in quotas. You know, I sh used to share your view, and indeed in Luton South, pardon me, reminiscing again, <laughs> the terrible MP had been chosen from an all-woman panel, and that, that Margaret Moran, but that, that was bad news. But I actually think if there were quotas, on programmes like this, on Question Time, on all kinds of panels, recruitment panels and so on, it would cause people to look further afield and to find people 
other than That's yourself, mm. You've hit other on than Mary there. Beard. Because actually part of the problem is just laziness. You go to the same people you've always been to and then... Yeah. Of course, they tend to have been men, so they're still men. So, but you do believe in quotas? I've got so. nothing against quotas. I'm certainly, if, if they brought in quotas, that would be fine. But I think people have to interrogate much more carefully what their own motivation is. You know, people who are booking have to say, hang on a second, why is it that I don't think there's any female authority on this? Why is it that I assume if I'm looking for an economist, I'm looking for a man? Why is it that I assume David Starkey knows everything about politics, whereas a kind of female historian only knows about history? Why am I making these assumptions? And I think if everybody interrogated themselves a bit more closely, they wouldn't really need quotas. Do you think we need a bit of masculine arrogance? Do you think we I need think to I've be able <laughs> to get well, your, out of our labels, your, out of our categories? Your masculine see? arrogance is actually taking the time that's going into the next programme. <laughs> Thank you very much, <laughs> indeed.